Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. Today I have a Go Video DVR 4000. It's the VHS and DVD convenient space saving and the complaint that I have there it is right there each tapes take up reel barely turns so on the back of it I do have an analog in and an RF 3 4 channel output line in line out as well as DVD only component video out separated video out and a line out audio and I also have an optical digital audio output and a coaxial digital audio output and all the usual warnings made in Korea the model number 27 watts power consumption and then of course it complies with all the rules and regulations so let's go ahead and uh, pop the top off of it and we'll slam a tape in it and see what it does and we're in power on there it goes Oh yeah, it tried to spill it out right there. Oh, that's definitely not good. No, it doesn't like that. Now, there's definitely something going on with that mechanism. Uh, it doesn't want to give me my tape back. It wants to load every time, and I don't want it to load. Possibly the video lights might be messing uh, the optical sensors up. Well, let me turn some lights off here. I'll do it in the dark. Yeah, it doesn't like that a bit. Yeah, it is not happy. Oh, there we go. Finally got the tape back. Only a little spillage. Not too bad. I think in the uh, video lights may have uh, been screwing up the uh, sensors here on each side. The uh, supply and take up. They have a uh, infrared LED right here in the middle that shines through both directions to detect the clear leader of the VHS tape. Uh, but let me go ahead and uh, we'll pull the mechanism out of it and just see uh, what we see on the bottom. So we'll start by removing the front cover. Just release the tabs down here on the bottom. More tabs. And then this actually should just pull completely off. No strings attached. Well, we got some screws out, some connectors unplugged. Let's see if this will cooperate and if it'll lift out. And it will. So there is the mode select switch. It's a rotary encoder switch. It normally has silver plated contacts and it does rotate and it sends the tape mechanism position back to the microprocessor so it knows where it is in the loading, unloading, play, rewind, fast forward overall position of the mechanism. So now we'll flip the mechanism over so we can see anything going on with the clutch mechanism here. Things don't sound good right off the bat. So I think we're having a gear engagement problem right here. Uh, the one uh, bottom gear that you can see down here is actually turning, but it's not engaging the take up or supply gears. It's turning. It should actually be turning this gear. It's really loose in there for some reason. Let's go ahead and pull this clip off, and this is the clutch mechanism that allows it to change from a low torque take up mode to a high torque for fast forward and rewind. And we'll try to pop this little ring off. Got it. 
take the belt off and we may have to do a little more disassembly to get the gear out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to line up this mark perfectly I have to actually try to think it's inserting a tape I'm rotating the loading gear here I have to trick the mechanism into thinking that I have a tape in it so now I've got the timing mark lined up with the mark right here these two marks are lined up perfectly straight with each other so I can go ahead and remove the screw that holds this little tab down that holds this gear in place I can remove that and then hopefully we can get this whole sliding mechanism out of here and you can see another timing mark here it's lined up perfectly straight these marks are lined up so we're gonna have to release the tab and get this gear off of here as well it looks like Kind of hard to see, but I'm moving this tab back right here to release this gear. There it is. Now this loading gear lifts out of the way. Now this complete sliding mechanism should be able to tip up and lift completely out. Got that out. And I think I see the problem right here. This gear has a crack. Now we'll have to release these brakes completely. So let's take this spring off. Spring is off. These are all spare parts. To figure out where they go when we're done. So now, I need to release those two gears. Just a matter of pushing in the tab. So those are completely out. And I'm hoping we can slide this out somehow. How'd they even build this thing? Hard to say. So we should be able just to pull this forward and it should release. And it does. So I think these are okay. I don't think there's any problem with that. There's the problem. These should be pressed together. Like that. And because this gear in my right hand is completely separated right here, it's completely broken in half. And because this was meant to be pressed fit onto this gear, and it locks in those tabs right there, should be like that, but eventually it gives up and lets go. So what we're gonna have to do is probably take a little drop of hot glue clean the surfaces really good and glue these permanently together in that fashion right there. So I'm going to get a Q-tip with some acetone and we're going to clean all the surfaces up really good. Then I'm really carefully going to drop some hot glue right into these areas right here. Maybe I'll just put a couple drops right on the tabs and then very quickly push it together and lock it in place like that. So I've got my hot glue gun here, it's heating up right now, and we'll go ahead and bond these two together permanently. So a little acetone here in the Pyrex dish, got a couple cotton swabs here. So I just want to make sure I clean the surface of all oily residue in and out completely. That one's good. Now I'm going to try to fold the cotton swab into a little point right here. so that I can get down inside here get all the grease away and now once the hot glue gun gets completely up to temperature we'll just put a little droplet on all three tabs and very quickly before it cools reassemble it just like that alright my hot glue gun is ready hopefully you'll be able to see this okay so really quickly I'm just going to put a three little dro droplets right there and then very quickly assemble it back together and I missed the mark so we're gonna have to heat it up so I have my hot air rework station here so we'll heat up the two halves after a couple of minutes of heat the glue should become molten enough where I can go ahead and align these gears together correctly so what I'm doing is I'm shooting the air right in between here to heat up the junction point it's cool enough where it shouldn't melt the plastic 
but it's warm enough that it should melt the hot glue. All right, so I've got it 242 degrees right now. Well, I can feel it moving already, that's great. Okay, let's see if we can get them into place. Ah, dropped right into place. Absolutely perfectly. So we'll just let it cool off. You can very lightly see the hot glue seeping out around right here. But the two halves are basically mold molded together at this point. They originally were a press fit from the factory, but because of this little gap right here, we've created a small problem when it cracked. I don't think the gap is going to uh, cause a problem with the gear. It should still mesh okay. At least I certainly hope so. There's really nothing I can do about that. So we'll let it cool off for a couple minutes and we'll go ahead and reassemble it back together. And we'll give it a trial run. See what happens. So everything looks good in the mechanism on the bottom side. We have the two notches lined up right here. We have the timing mark lined up with the, with the line right here. So everything should theoretically work out. So let's go ahead and clean the capstan uh, belt pulley as well as the take up pulley. And we'll use the acetone. I'm going to go ahead and dip the cotton swab in the acetone and we'll get in the belt pulley and we'll just run it around a little bit just to get any glaze off of it. Look at that, how much came off. We'll do the same thing to the capstan pulley. I'm going to go ahead and flatten that out. I'm going to redip it. Much better. Much better. Now let's go ahead and clean the belt. I have my paper towel. I'm going to fold it over, make a crease, position the belt in the crease, dip it in my acetone, and just pull the belt through. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. I'm going to move to a new location. And we'll do this two or three more times. The belt feels really good right now. Got quite a bit of quite a bit of gunk off that belt. Uh, definitely has more than enough torque right now. All right, bottom side of the mechanism is assembled. Next, I need to go ahead and reverse the loading motor and eject this mechanism out. Here it comes. I have the spring that I took off previously. Let's see if we can get it reattached. Spring for the brakes are reattached. Now we'll go ahead and give it a real quick cleaning. As you can see the cylinder right here where the video heads are definitely needs a little bit of attention. Now I will be using the Q-tip and acetone to clean this as I have since roughly 1983. Never had any adverse effects on this. So we'll go ahead and give that a clean. We'll also go ahead and clean the control head that you see down here and then the audio erase head. This is the audio play record head and then just behind it right here, the dark head is the audio erase head. This head right here is the full erase head. It erases the full tape as it passes by it in the record mode. And we'll go ahead and clean the tape guides right here, the tape roller, the angle rollers. This is the back tension arm right here. It, it applies a certain amount of back tension to the tape via this band right here that wraps around the supply reel. And of course, we'll go ahead and clean the capstan shaft right here, as well as the pinch roller which is severely glazed. We'll just use a paper towel, nothing special. Just what you have at home, everyday cleaning products, and the take-up guide as well. All right, first for the video drum, video head assembly, I'm gonna dip, and then I'm just gonna scrub in a linear fashion.
very gently scrubbing the video heads. Now the heads will actually take a considerable amount of force in the right to left fashion, but they will take almost no up and down force. They're made of ferrite. They're very brittle, but if you're scrubbing, look at how much I've gotten off, just off the head drum and the head itself. So now the new end of the cotton swab. We'll go around the head one more time. I don't know, people told me I should use a piece of paper, which I have used in the past. A business card. There's so many different ways to clean a video head, but like I said, I've been doing this since the early 80s, probably about 1983, and I've always used cotton swabs. And I've never had any adverse effects. I don't think I've ever damaged a video head in over 30 years. Got a little off that time. Not nearly as bad. Now we'll hit the bottom of the uh, drum. The fully raised head and the entrance tape guide. The entrance tape roller and the angle guide. The back tension lever. The exit angle guide. Look at how much has come off there. That's amazing. The exit roller. The audio erase head. And the audio playback record head. And the control head down here for playback and record. And then we'll try to hit the captain shaft right here. And the exit guide. A little more on the capstan. It's really stained. Alright, so next I'm just going to take my acetone and a paper towel. I'm going to dip it just to get it a little bit wet. And then I'm going to come to the pinch roller. And it's kind of hard to see with my fingers in the way, but I'm just going to scrub the pinch roller up and down. And slightly rotate it. And we're going to try to get that glaze off of it. You can see how shiny it was. It's definitely much better now. We'll hit it just a couple more times. Get it back into view here where you guys can see it. Just scrub it. Rotate it at the same time. Look how much more we got off. That looks really good right now. So now, let's go ahead and put it back together and see what kind of results we get. I almost forgot, we need to clean the rotary encoder switch. Normally these, you can just pop the top off. They're just held in place with a snap. So as you can see down here, there's four tabs. They lock it into place right here. These are the four wipers. We're going to go ahead and clean those with a stainless toothbrush. Then we'll scrub the entire path down here as well. Look how oxidized that is. So I've got a stainless toothbrush right here. And I'm just going to go around this. It's not perfect, but it's much better. Next, we'll just go ahead and wipe it out. Much, much better contacts than we had. Next, I'm going to apply a little bit of dielectric grease. And then we'll go ahead and brush the contacts. Only brush them in one direction. And we'll do the same with the dielectric grease here. Add just a small amount. Next, we'll go ahead and just snap it back together. And we'll run it around a few times. And that should be good. We should be ready for reassembly. So now this hole right here is where this pin needs to go and it's offset very slightly. So I'm gonna turn it just a little bit, about that far, to make sure it lines up with this hole right here. 
So when I reassemble the two halves, they should lock into place. Okay, so now the thing should line up quite easily. It's just a matter of lining up the infrared LED in the center right here. Everything else should drop into place. A little bit downward motion should lock in that plug for the video heads. That's a stationary plug on the bottom of the chassis. Now we'll go ahead and reconnect the ribbon cables. That's the cylinder motor. This is the audio control erase head. And over here in the corner is the loading motor. Now we just got to put the screws back in it. Put this little bracket. This keeps the DVD uh, cables away from any uh, moving parts. I've got four screws to put in. Three that mechanically hold the chassis in place. And one that connects the two grounds together. We'll go ahead and put the stiffening brace back on. Next, we'll go ahead and put the front back on it. Now, when you put the front back onto a VHS machine, in most cases, uh, this is the door lift lever right here. And it opens the VHS door via this little little recess and so it's important that this point right here go under the recess so you need to open the door up first and then attach it and then you can close the door anyhow let's fire it up and see what happens let me hook up some video cables and of course I'm gonna to have to turn the lights off because they interfere with the infrared LEDs we'll turn the power on the transport does jog slightly Next, we'll drop a tape into it. Hit play. There we go, it's playing. Let's do a stop. Let's do a fast forward. Well, I think the clicking that you're hearing is that split tooth as it doesn't line up with the other side of the gear. So let's take a look at the video monitor and make sure it plays. All right, so I'm going to put the video monitor on AV input and we'll hit play. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed this video on the Go Video DVR 4000. So there it is playing back some home movies that I recorded back in 1986. If you enjoyed this video, please consider making a donation on my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash NorCal715. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that bell to get future notifications. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.